carry the flag for Leningrad against their Moscow rivals. Christy Yamaguchi and Rudy Galindo skate against all odds. The U.S. national champions now live a thousand miles apart. And in this precision sport, a world championship medal will be difficult. Isabel Brasseur and Lloyd Eisler are the odd couple of Canadian pairs. Third in their national championships, they now carry Canada's hopes after the downfall of defending silver medalist Landry and Johnston. On the rocky coastline of Canada's maritime province, we are in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Today on Olympic Winterfest, countdown to Albertville. We are here for the 1990 World Figure Skating Championships. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Vern Lundquist. Welcome to our continuing coverage of the 1990 World Figure Skating Championships from Halifax, Nova Scotia. Today, we'll feature the pairs competition. And joining me with a commentary, former Olympic and world champion Scott Hamilton. Scott, no new lyrics to the song. The Soviets are featured again, as they have been for almost a generation. But in your mind, is there a chance that either the Canadian pairs or U.S. pairs could sneak in and grab a medal? Well, the Soviets, dominant, more dominant, always dominant. And they're threatening to sweep the medals here. But at the same time, they're being threatened by two much-improved North American pair teams. Much improved, yes, but generally not perceived to be on the same level as the Soviet Union. What makes tonight's performance so important is if one of the North Americans can sneak in there and win a medal, it'll break down those preconceived notions and give them an opportunity for maybe a medal in Albertville. As far as the gold medal, well, Gordiev and Grinkov, who seemed unbeatable at the European Championships, aren't skating quite so competently here and are being challenged by another Soviet team, and it's going to be very close and exciting. Well, we'll feature the top pairs contenders a little bit later, but there's an interesting sidelight to the competition that involves a pairs member from the United States. And for more on that, let's go to our colleague, Pat O'Brien. All right, Vern, thank you very much. Well, picture this. You are this tall. Skating has been your whole life. In fact, you remember that your father once threw the flaming baton in the ice capades, but you don't remember much because you are only 13. But you will always remember that they had to break the rules for you to skate at the Worlds. Your name is Natasha Kuchiki. And you are a happy little girl. You can barely pick up your luggage, but when you get out on the ice, you look like you've been there all your life. In fact, you almost have. Your coach, John Nix, once taught Ty Babylonia and Randy Gardner how to compete. Your partner, well, he was skating three years before you were born. I didn't really think about the age difference. It was just mainly, I guess, me being scared. Of course you're scared. You're 13. And suddenly you're doing things you've only seen on television. In fact, the case can be made you didn't want to be here in the first place. Well, the first time she came down, her mother had driven her from North Hollywood area. It must have been an hour and a half drive on the freeway in Los Angeles, which is uh, not easy. And she came into the rink, came down the stairs into my office. Uh, I think I uh, talked to her for two minutes. She started crying and left, and her mother drove her an hour and a half back to North Hollywood. So the beginning wasn't very auspicious. You and your partner got second at the Nationals, good enough to go to the Worlds. But there was a catch. You were too young. And so you had to wait around for another decision, like waiting for your marks. It felt like the competition wasn't over. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. It didn't feel like the competition was over. It felt like it, we were still all keyed up, waiting to find out. 
uh, three years ago at 1988 at European Championships. There was a, a GDR um, pair, East German pair, and the girl was uh, about uh, 20 days younger. But we made the decision that she was allowed and uh, the pair was allowed to start. And so this was the precedent which helped us to take the decision to allow them to start at this World Championships. And so, even though you're not 14, they changed the rules and let your 13 years into the world. And while you were waiting to skate, you should have seen the looks on your little girl face. You didn't let the nerves get to you. Why? Because you're a big girl now. I was a little nervous tonight, more than I was earlier. But the the crowd's great, and it's fun. You think you can get used to this, huh? Yeah. Back in Halifax and on the ice in the Bears competition now from the United States, Sharon Cars and Doug Williams. They're really an interesting couple. Sharon is 24 and Doug 27 years of age. They skate in Southern California. They've been together for just three years and they're among the older competitors here. Skating has become more of an avocation than anything else. And as a result, they both work full-time, Sharon, with a, an unusual occupation. She's a bartender. Doug wants to get into television work. He works right now in a post-production studio in Los Angeles. Sharon and Doug have no chance for a medal here. They were 13th coming into the free skate, but I don't think that matters to the two of them. At ages 27 and 24, they qualified for their first world. They're just enjoying themselves. There's a move they do as well as anybody in the world, a beautiful throw double axle. theatrical approach to her free programs.
our best and make an introduction to the international judges is really exciting and they've had a great week. What a nice moment for Sharon Cars and Doug Williams of the United States. We'll be back with the battle for the gold medal after this message. Battle for the gold. Let's go down to Pat O'Brien with Sharon Cars and Doug Williams. That was fun, huh? That was great. We had a great time. The crowd here in Halifax has been fantastic. We felt really good about doing the whole performance. Sharon, what'd you think? It was awesome. I was just floating around up there. As long as you get the landing gear out on time, you just like. I never had to touch the ground. I was <laughs> really excited. Now, your views about skating, have they changed now that you've been out of Worlds? Um, no, I don't think so. We're still eyeing the 92 Olympic team, and this was very good for us to be here and get our feet wet in the world crowd, yeah. and this was a great event, a lot of good skaters. It's good to see the other top people and see what we're really up against instead of watching it on TV. You know, we're really in the heat right now, and it gives you a good perspective of what you, you need to do. Beats bartending, huh? You got it. <laughs> Here's the way they stand going into the free skate. Gordieva and Grinkov leading as expected, followed by Mishkin Chanak and Dmitriev. Selesteva and Makarov are next. So now we get to the focal point of the competition, the free skating performance. And joining Scott and me for the commentary is Sandra Bezik, five times national pairs champion of Canada, and most recently the choreographer for Brian Boitano. Sandy, you had a chance to listen to Scott's assessment of the Soviets. What do you think of them? Well, assuming that each team skates their best, Technically, they're comparable, so the difference will be in the choreography and how they do what they do. Gordieva and Grinkoff, they are potentially the ones to be brilliant this evening. How about the Canadian pair and the U.S. pair? Is there any chance in your mind that they can grab uh, second or third place, perhaps? Well, the Canadian pair has to face the pressure of this home crowd looking for new heroes. The American team, well, they have their own turmoil to deal with over the last few months, but it would be really nice to see each of these teams skate a, a medal performance. It has indeed been a turbulent year for 18-year-old Christy Yamaguchi. Very little stability. Here's Pat O'Brien. Reflect with us, if you will, about the life changes of a young girl named Christy Yamaguchi. And since Paris, what a year it has been. For beginners, she's left home and moved to a foreign country. Well, it's Canada, but when you leave mom behind, no matter where you go, it's foreign. Reflect, if you will, what life used to be. High school student, carefree, got your friends to lean on. And reflect, if you will, on the wedding day of her coach. The day she probably decided once and for all, she had to go where her coach was going. Her coach was going to Canada. Life changes, and sometimes the things you miss the most are those little things. It's hard when I go home and I have to leave like the next day for a competition somewhere. Sometimes I think, God, can I just stay here for a week and get familiar with my room again? <laughs> She's a commuter, really. And when in Canada, Hi. her coach, Christy Ness, meets her at the airport and takes her to her Canadian home. You see, skating is a commitment. And if you are committed, you live, eat, and sleep skating. When you live with your coach, you live, eat, and sleep skating. Sometimes a sport can be an occupation. This is one of those times. Every day, it's off to the rink and time to take in the new environment. No time here to reflect on what was. This is today, and tomorrow you might get a gold medal. In fact, Christy 
trains with the Canadians. And speaking of gold medals, world champion Kurt Browning is always nearby to remind her of what brilliance is all about. To be brilliant, you have to train and practice. Train and practice. And to keep sane, you have to get away sometime. So why not go watch some skaters? Try your hand at other sports. See what happens. Okay, she's not Bo Jackson. One sport will do. But in this sport, she has to reflect on two events, singles and pairs. And if something looks wrong with this picture, you're right. There's no partner. This is one of those other life changes, and it's not an easy one. It was hard on us because Rudy had to move up here to Canada also. So, and then we don't get too much coaching when we're up here in Canada. But uh, we've tried to stay by each other and work e work through it together. Her partner, Rudy Galindo, lives in San Jose. Their pairs coach lives in Southern California. And so between all the cities in Canada, it's tough. Skating lessons can't be faxed. Well, I've described it either as a uh, geographical challenge or a geographical nightmare. It can be uh, both, depending on how you look at it. Um, but the one thing that saves uh, Rudy Galindo and Christy Yamaguchi is their wonderful inherent skating talent, uh, which I think surpasses uh, anything else I see in pair skating here. And I say that with thought. Their individual skating talents are remarkable. Remarkable indeed. And through all the life changes, the skating has improved. Like to us, he pushed his illness aside and focused more on us. He came up to Canada whenever we came up to work with us, and I think he sacrificed a lot of his health just for our skating. Unfortunately, when I was in Japan with him in, uh, I think it was November, it was uh, very obvious that uh, he was extremely sick and uh, was declining rapidly. And I came home on the plane with him into LAX uh, in his wheelchair, which was, uh, which is not a, uh, not a happy experience for me at all. I was uh, very upset about it. And uh, of course, unfortunately, he, he died a couple of weeks later. Oh, yeah, well, I think our entire pair's career is dedicated to Jim. He started us out and was with us the last seven years of his life, and I think he's made us into what we are right now. You're looking for some good from the United States. Next on the ice, the U.S. National Pairs champions, Christy Yamaguchi and Rudy Galindo. They are in fifth place after the original program. First thing you'll notice, if you haven't seen them since last year, is they've really improved their speed. Their opening lift, a split triple twist. Beautiful into a throw double loop.
important. They're the best single skaters in the competition. Side by side, triple flips, the hardest side by side jumps in the competition. He popped his, she did hers. That won't be ignored by the judges. Jumping in opposition is always a handicap, too, because you can never have the unison that the European judges especially are looking for. is competing in the ladies' singles competition. She had to be up at 5 o'clock this morning for ladies' compulsories. Do you think fatigue may be important at all? Well, she was up late last night with the short program in the pairs event, so a late night and early morning and practice all day. Fatigue has to be a factor here. Beautiful throw, triple sow cow. entrance to side-by-side -side double axles and she couldn't hang on to it again I think they've just had too much on their minds for the last few months and especially this week kind of performance that they had hoped for. Well, they did have a lot of trouble with their singles elements, and that's their strength. The pair elements are much improved. Here's another look at those side-by-side -side triple toe loops. Now, watch her. He completed the move, but she had trouble on the landing of the triple toe loop. You'll see here, she's forward on the toe, right there, and she doesn't it's have the speed to pull off the double Yamaguchi toe and Rodrigo Galindo. Now let's check the marks first for technical merit, merit for Yamaguchi and five, Galindo. Five, five, four, five, six. Well, those four, reflect five, the fact that it four, wasn't their best five, performance, six, but they have improved five, since last five, year, and five, I'm sure they'll be able five, to regroup six. for next year. Sang, 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 sang. Backstage, Isabel Brasseur of the Canadian pairs of Brasseur and Eisler, and they're very much in metal contention, so watching to these next artistic impression marks for Yamaguchi and Galindo. And these should go down a little bit. They really worked hard on their parallels, but there's still, there's one thing you can't practice, and that's maturity. And seasoning is just something that it just takes time. That's it in the 1990 world figures for Yamaguchi and Galindo. 
still to come. Gordieva and Grinkov, they're next. We'll be back after this message and a word from your local station. Next competitors from the Soviet Union. From the Soviet Union, 18-year-old Ekaterina Gordieva, 22-year-old Sergei Grinkov. From Moscow, the defending world and Olympic champions, they are in first place after the original program. This program is beautifully constructed, balanced technically and artistically. They open with split, split triple twist. Look how high she is over his head. Beautifully done. Their next move is side-by-side -side triple toe loops. It's a new move for them this year. They've been having trouble with them in practice. And she can't hit it onto the landing. Not a major problem but it could open a door for another team. Sandra, I think you sensed in practice that Katya looked a little tentative. Yes, yeah, she has been having problems with her jumps lately, and I think it's all about being 18 years old. When she was 14, she didn't realize what she had to be nervous about, and I think now she does. side jumps, double axles in the combination. She singled hers, could not do anything with the landing. Disastrous. This is going to open the door wide open. It's really unfortunate because you lose the true benefit of this program. What's beautiful about it is its seamlessness. One move unfolds into the next. They're back on track, Scott? Very much so. Their pair moves have been great all week. It's just the single elements, side-by-side -side jumping, that they've been having trouble with. inside death spiral this might be the weakest performance I've seen them do in two years maybe ever 
Well, this is really unusual. Gordieva and Drinkov have grown accustomed to standing ovations, and this is really a rather tepid reaction from this knowledgeable crowd in Halifax. I, th I think they're in shock. Katya had problems with the, her jumps, but it wasn't just that. The performance was really uninspired compared to usual. Well, they just seem generally out of sync. When you look at the singles elements, here's the double axle combination replay. Watch her. She can't. She decides not to do it right there, and then from there on, she can't recover. There's, and now he's going on with the combination, and they're completely out of sync. She can't catch up. Serious hole in the program. <laughs> And a serious look from Farms Katia Gordieva as she awaits the march for technical merit. Here they are. And those are disastrous for them because those are much lower than they're used to. They're used to getting five eights and nines. But with those two serious miscues, the one being disastrous, the double axle combination, that could open the door more than wide for any other couple to come in. Well, there's the couple, Mishka Chonak and Dimitria, with their coach, Tamara Moskvina. March for artistic impression. And now the march for artistic impression. Five, seven, five, and I eight, think those, you know, five, it shows the maturity, eight, and five, nine, they're a wonderful five, pair. Nine, they're they're five, just beautiful eight, to watch, and the program five, was beautifully nine, constructed. Five, so a very uninspired performance by these two, back with more after this. Representing Canada, Isabel Brasseur, Lloyd Eisler. They are fourth after the original program, and they had a terrific original program. These two have the emotional momentum behind them. They've been skating wonderfully all week. They do so after only a third place finish in the Canadian Nationals. They just felt better and better. Side by side double axles coming up. If there's a problem, it's going to be here. No problem. Eisler is a veteran skater in pairs for the Canadian team. He finished third in the world in 85 with a different partner. He's from Ontario and Isabel from Quebec. So they did not share a language in common. He moved to Quebec when they were paired together and he is learning French and she's learning English. They communicate quite well.
last move has been a hazardous one all week, a throw triple toe loop. If they get past this, I think they have a chance for a medal. It was a year ago that Cindy Landry and Lyndon Johnston surprised everyone. Look at the strength of this lift. One-handed up. Their lifts are absolutely spectacular. By far the best in this competition. And now you can sense the crowd really urging them on. Well, I mentioned a year ago, Cindy Landry and Lyndon Johnston won second in a surprise. Could this be the night for Lloyd Eisler at 26 years of age and 19-year-old Isabel Brasseur? Frenzy continues for that performance by Isabel Brasseur and Lloyd Eisler. Oh, Canada. Rupa, sweetie. For Isabel Brasseur. These marks should be great. Whoa, five, nine. Four, five, five, five eight. eight. Five Unbelievable. Eight, Four judges, five, Denmark, six, Canada, Great five, Britain, eight, and Australia five, nine, have them above Gordy David Brinkhoff. Well, they six, clearly outperformed Gordy David Brinkhoff. Five, five, eight. Cinq, huit, cinq, huit, cinq, six, cinq, huit, cinq, neuf, cinq, huit, cinq, six, cinq, sept, cinq, huit. Thank Pete. Marks for artistic impression. Now the marks for artistic impression. And these are great as well as the Dane Four judges have them above Gordy Even Grinkoff overall, but the other five judges have them behind. They've got to be thrilled with those marks in that performance. Five, seven, five, seven. Isabel Brasseur and Lloyd Eisner started in fourth position now. Delindo and Yamaguchi watching backstage. Miskyu Chanak and Dimitri have still to skate. So a lot of strategy going on backstage. Here's Pat O'Brien. Oh. There with uh, Tamara Moscovina. And there's a little opening now. What do your kids have to do to be number one? I think they have to do everything. Uh, skate as well as the Canadians. Then uh, they should uh, impress the public with their uh, performance, with their maybe humorously movements, humorous movements. Mm, uh, with the North American show business look and uh, do everything perfect. Show business. Yes, show business. <laughs> She's not a charmer, is she? We'll be right back. Concordant, the next competitor. Next on the ice from, from the, the Soviet, Soviet Union, Union Soviet Larisa Selesneva Larisa Oleg, Oleg Makarov. Currently third after the original program. They have been around for a long, long time. They're a married couple. Larissa is 26, Oleg 27. Side by side, triple toe loops. Oh, and they do them 
nicely. Do they have the kind of performance that could uh, push them up to the gold medal? If they're clean, but they, she just missed her double axel, and, and that's, that's going to hurt. Their side-by-side -side elements are usually pretty good. It's their pair elements that are lacking. Watch this throw double axel. Triple toe loop coming up. He throws her into the air. She's been three times. A two foot landing. That will count off in the judge's eye. Musical choice is so important. In the original program, they skated to Michael Jackson. And that worked for their aggressive personality, but here it's just not working. Watch the dismount of this lip. That is not a mistake. That's also not particularly difficult. Selesneva and Makarov, veterans, as we mentioned, they were third in the 84 Olympic Games and fourth in 88 in Calgary. Their coach, Igor Mostlin, is the husband of the charming lady you saw talking with Pat O'Brien some time ago, Tavara Mostlina. That leaves one couple to skate. Natalia Miskachunuk, Artur Dmitriev. We'll be back after this message and a word from your local station. The Soviet Union, the Union Soviet Natalia Miskachunuk, Artur Dmitriev. Next on the ice, the final pair of the night, 19-year-old Natalia Miskachunuk and her partner, 22-year-old Artur Dmitriev. Second after the original program.
they really challenged Gordy Avon Greenkopf in the original program. And they've been skating really well. They peaked this year. Their opening moves are side by side triple toe loops. And they do them! That could be the difference in the competition right there. Triple twist lift. Beautifully done. They had to survive a skate-off with another Soviet team to qualify for the European Championships. something that they've invented and it's really wonderful. That's just great. I hate to differ with you, but a Canadian team invented that. <laughs> And now, of course, it's up to the judges. Will they decide that this effort will surpass that of Gordieva and Brinkov, or indeed of Eisler and Brasur? Interested parties now have to wait. 
Standings in the pairs, Gordieva and Grinkov do manage to hold on to first place. Brasur and Eisler finish second, but it was a very controversial pairs event. Here's Pat O'Brien. But now I think we're ready. Getting the silver is one thing, but coming this far from beating the unbeatables is something else, right? Uh, for us, it, it, we're just thrilled. I mean, we came here with the intention of having fun and skating our best, and we did. And when we skate our best, we're happy, and how they choose to put us is great. They chose to put us that much away which means that uh, they're not invincible and they can be beat they seem to build all week right you felt the confidence coming uh yeah well like you said you know we weren't coming here to have a medal or anything we're just coming here to have fun and skate the best as we could and skate for us and be proud of ourselves and that's what we did and i'm so happy that it came that we finished second yeah. i'm like dreaming the paris competition took place last wednesday night here in halifax we're now outside the Metro Center of what we call Video Village, but uh, we're still buzzing about the controversy, Scott. Well, I may have gotten caught up in some of those preconceived notions I discussed at the beginning of the evening, but uh, Gordy and Grinkoff, they may be the best pair team in the world, but I think it's safe to say that the wrong team won in the night. Sandra, your reaction? Well, four of the judges placed the Canadians first, but the others didn't, and it seems as though maybe they were judging according to reputation. That will do it for the Paris competition at the 1990 World Figure Skating Championships. We'll see you again on March 24th with the ice dancing competition. For Sandra Bezik and Scott Hamilton, I'm Vern Lundquist. Goodbye from Halifax, Nova Scotia.